Hi, I'm Tim Moore with Lamb and Lion Ministries. Welcome to this episode of Prophetic Perspective. You know, in his letter to Philemon, Paul called himself a prisoner of Jesus Christ. But prior to that, he wrote a letter to the Romans where he said, we are all prisoners of our sin until we're freed by Jesus Christ. Well, today we're going to talk to a man who was a prisoner of war in Iraq. Lieutenant Colonel Rob Sweet was shot down in 1991 after attacking an Iraqi tank column and finding himself hit by a surface-to-air missile. He spent several days as a prisoner, enduring great trial and tribulation, torture indeed. And yet it was his faith in Christ who helped him endure that test and come home to a hero's welcome. Rob, you, you mentioned uh, some of the concerns you have over the PC culture that's taking over our world, obviously even infecting our military. Uh, what gives you concern regarding the, the trends that are out there, and what gives you hope right now? Uh, not a lot, of, other than the Lord himself and Jesus. Uh, this is not a lot of stuff I see out there. There's not a lot of hope going on. I'm very, I'm very upset with the embracing, because you're not supposed to hate sinners, right? You're supposed to hate the sin. But, you know, that's not what a, a lot of the society today want. They want you to embrace their sinful ways and celebrate it which I'm not going to do anyway. Uh, so that, that brings me, that concerns me. You know, there was a, a, a certain politician that I'll remain nameless that said, you know, you know, if you got a problem with it, with my lifestyle, take it up with God. I'm, he made me this way. I'm like, no, dude, it's sin in everybody's heart. It's up to you whether you're going to act on, act on it or not. Yeah. It, my we, yeah. We are rebels to God and he certainly did not, uh, he did not inspire us to sin. It's, the scripture says, the Lord will not tempt you. So all the sin that we embrace or, uh, or even tolerate is, is on us. Yeah, and I would like to share a, uh, an, an experience I have with your viewers and yourself, if you don't mind. But, uh, you know, I'm not a guy that usually remembers my dreams at all. You know, I, I sleep like a log, done, get a good night's sleep. I woke up ready to go. But it was two years ago where I had a dream and Jesus came to me in the dream. Now, I believe this was not just my brain making this up. I actually believe that, that, that Jesus came to me. And I was, I was in the weight room of YMCA, if you believe that, which I don't even go to. But uh, he was standing there, and, the, and I came up to him, and, and he was concerned about the humanity or our, our, our society's obsession with physical fitness and health. You know, because and then his point was, you know, you're only here for a short time. Yes, your body's a temple. You want to take care of it, but you shouldn't be so obsessed with health that, you know, you kind of put everything else aside because he's going to call you, you know, the Lord's going to call you and then you're going to go. And then it doesn't matter if you were, your blood pressure was in limits or not. Right. <laughs> but anyway, I, I asked him, I said, well, when, when are you coming back? And he told me, and I know what the scripture says, of course, but he told me two generations. And then I asked him if my, my children that have kind of, you know, of course, they're in their young 20s and influenced by bad things and got, have kind of drifted away from the faith. I asked if my oldest was going to come back to the faith. And he wouldn't answer me. Then I woke up. Well, I tell you what, I think that more and more people are having dreams and visions. We hear all the time about people, especially in the Middle East, that missionaries can't get to, uh, people can't go in to share. And so Jesus is appearing to them in dreams and saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life, just as he revealed in Scripture, and they're coming to faith. So I don't de deny or, uh, or, or even question the fact that he would appear to you. Uh, when you say two generations, the old question is, well, how long is a generation? And, and we don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Your daughter's about to get married. You may have another set of grand youngins. Or, or do you have any grandchildren yet? No, sadly, no. First one's getting married. So. There you go. Well, I got four so far, and so I'm already on to that I'm second jealous. generation. So, you know, I think that the Lord is coming soon. That's what we declare all the time. And we don't know whether that's tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, or 100 years from now. But, but it will be sudden. It will be soon. And as you said, we don't have time to wait. And we can get so fixated on other things, whether it's our physical health or fitness or or things that are just temporal in this world, and he would have us keep an eternal perspective. I think that is a, an overridingly critical message. I appreciate you sharing it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Well, Rob, what are your plans? I know you mentioned to me one time that you intend to write a book. Have you started on that? Yes. Uh, I, I promised my uh, recently departed father that I would get on that. So that's on my uh, list. We're getting ready to move. 
I'm going to keep uh, going to church. I'm, I've been d- doing more with that as I, and basically I'm trying to be an example to the rest of my family. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they already kind of say, well, you know, you, we know the, you're a man of faith that, and that makes me proud because I'm trying to set an example for the rest of my family. So maybe they'll start going to church a little more often. Hopefully that'll work. And, uh, but you can only lead by example, right? One of the fund- fundamentals of leadership is lead by example and lead yes. from the front. Yes. So yep. that's my, uh, and of course, going with you to the Holy Lands, uh, now on my bucket list in the <laughs> near future, within a year or two. <laughs> well, I hope you will. I really do. And, and you're exactly right. For our children, when you have them, our grandchildren, leading by example is critical. Uh, I like to say, though, even just being in church doesn't make you a believer any more than standing in the garage makes you a car. So your, your living testimony and your, your verbal testimony, which you've shared today, I know you've shared with your kids and, and friends all around you, has great power. And even sharing the dream, Rob, that, that touches my heart because it, it demonstrates that the Lord's not finished with you but that he's given you a platform. You think, why do I endure something like, uh, you know, weeks of of horror and trauma in an Iraqi cell? But it has given you a platform to be able to to speak and to be listened to by people all over the country and around the world in a way that they wouldn't listen to somebody else. And so you've taken advantage of that opportunity to point people to Christ and to point people to the, the foundations that will help them endure any challenge and will really get them to an eternal reward. I agree. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Rob. You know, folks, this has been a real joy for me to sit down with an old buddy who served together with me many years ago in the Air Force and has continued to be a living testimony of how faith in Christ helped him overcome uh, an incredible ordeal as a prisoner of war in Iraq. Sometimes you and I can find ourselves uh, overwhelmed by circumstances and and prisoner even to our own insecurities or uncertainties about what the future holds. But Rob was very clear. Only by putting our faith in Christ, only by standing on the solid rock that he represents, can we overcome all of the challenges. And can we be set free from the, the jail cell of our own sin? I hope that you, like Rob and I have put your trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I hope he gives you a God's eye view of all this world, just like Rob talked about as an Air Force pilot, and that he gives you an eternal perspective that regardless of circumstances here and now, you have an eternity with our great God and Savior to look forward to. I pray that's true for you. I hope you'll join us again on the next episode of Prophetic Perspective or on our Christ in Prophecy. Until then, I'm Tim Moore for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, Godspeed.